We were lucky enough to get Jana Gonchava from uh, Constanta organization, um, who uh, who is there, who is in Belarus. Uh, who has been a part of the protests uh, and has been one of the organizers. And she will tell us a little bit more about how the um, situation looks uh, from her side, how the society is feeling and actually what we need to, sort of the key takeaways that we need to know about the, the protests, why are they different, why are they so special. Um, and also give us a little bit of inspiration because I feel like sometimes we in, the, in our parts of the world tend to get a little bit uh, skeptical or pessimistic uh, about what we do and uh, the strength of civil society and their courage under such difficult circumstances is something that we could all learn from and use it to re-energize re our work. Jana, go ahead. Yeah, hi, thank you for intro introduction. Uh, I, I hope I can give you some hope <laughs> and how, uh, some inspiration about what we have there. And yes, I agree that sometimes uh, civil society organizations are become a bit desperate and um, and we, we feel that, uh, we felt that before, and now we felt mostly tired. <laughs> so uh, I will try to share something with you uh, about the key features, I don't know, some things to know about the Belarusian protests uh, and you can find something interesting from you. I, I bet uh, that six months ago, most of you or some of you didn't know uh, almost nothing about Belarus uh, except the uh, potatoes and tractor. And maybe someone uh, even know that Belarus is the only country in Europe that still uses the death penalty. Uh, so yeah, something to know. And for 20, 26 years, Alexander Lukashenko ruled Belarus and this year, uh, elections were held in Belarus uh, where he lost and he couldn't uh, lose as a strong grown up person and who couldn't uh, he couldn't even uh, falsify these elections like a strong grown up person drawing 80 percent word for himself and for several days uh, he tried to literally uh, beat off uh, the people wishing for some changes uh, I will not dive into the fact that uh, these were People got involved in uh, the first elections when fresh wind and hope for changes. And it became uh, the catalyst for the protest. Uh, he stole from people their free future, their hope for a change. And uh, can we have a presentation, please? Uh, yes, uh, and yet uh, Belarusian protests uh, turn out to be uh, somehow unique and very atypical, uh, at least uh, because uh, this is the first massive and long-lasting protest in Belarus. Uh, today I want to share you six things about the Belarusian protest. Uh, next slide, please. So first, uh, first thing, uh, what we observe is refusal of violence. Uh, Belarusian protests are absolutely mostly on 99 Belarusians are generally very peaceful uh, and law-abiding people. If you met a person standing at the red light uh, on an empty street, he or she is from Belarus, you could be sure. Despite numerous attempts by the security forces to provoke protesters, despite the shock of uh, the first three days of endless violence, uh, people refuse to engage in armed conflicts, uh, to attack the police and inflict pain. We are confident that uh, violence is not a way out of situation. So we are, we are confident that violence is not a way out of our situation. And um, perhaps uh, Belarusians are the first nation to resist evil so desperately with nonviolence. And uh, I would like uh, nonviolence to become our expert product, uh, nonviolence in relation to each other, to our colleagues, neighbors, fellow citizens, and nature, everything. Uh, next slide, please. So other thing that we can find is uh, caring for the environment. You've probably seen a photo uh, where uh, protesters in Minsk stand the benches on the square. Uh, what's going on? What's wrong with that? Uh, we'll say you have not seen. I will show you. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, the fact is that they took off their shoes before that. 
and it was not once it, it was all the time the distinctive feature of our produce is our concern for the world around us for shops uh, flowers building everything the old government will go away but all these will remain with us and we will have to live with that uh, we're not interested in destroying everything what we built ourselves to we want to preserve our city and country, our nature, to preserve what we have been developing for many tough years, uh, even for the sake of revolution. Yes, you can probably build something new on the ruins of old temple, but Minsk was destroyed during the World War II, and we want to preserve what we have left. Mm, next slide, please. Uh, other thing is the women's protest. Uh, Belarus is a country of victorious feminism, uh, as we say. Uh, in fact, the former president has never perceived women as a person. He said that uh, presidency is too heavy burden for women. Uh, that the constitution of Belarus was not, remain, uh, not written for a woman, whatever he means. Uh, he admitted uh, Svetlana Tikhanovska to the ele elections, considering that she is uh, uh, she's weak, she is too weak uh, uh, as a rival. Uh, but uh, the female, female triumvirate defeated him. And on August 12th, uh, on the third cruel day of the inhuman brutality that would use, was used against peaceful demonstrators, women went to the streets in white and with flowers. Uh, I, I don't know how to prove it, but it was one of the turning points. Uh, it seems to me that uh, this is when the endless wave of solidarity, of our solidarity, was born. We help each other to hide from the police, to bring waters uh, to districts what his, that has been cut off the water pipes, later uh, to political prisoners and many other things. Another week after the first uh, women's actions, uh, there were peaceful women's protests on the streets. Uh, women lined up in the chains of solidarity along the roads and uh, people give them flowers from the cars. Uh, and it was in unimaginable uh, harm from the honking horns in Minsk. Next slide, please. Uh, women's, women's protests in Belarus have stopped the violence, at least for a while. Uh, women in white with flowers in their hands walked toward the police in black. It was really a powerful uh, picture. Um, and they give hope to the rest of us. For a while, the security didn't know what to do with this. It was strange to arrest uh, peaceful women in white and with flowers. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, but later, they managed to resolve this internal conflict and women started to get brutally arrested too, like everyone else. So it's kind of equality, equality too. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the other thing is about the leaders in protests. Um, in 1994, several opponents of Lukashenko and journalists disappeared from the face of the earth. They have never been found and no one knows exactly uh, what happens with them. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, since there any leader who has appeared in the political arena of Belarus uh, will, uh, will end up in prison. So it happens with those who became the leaders this year, uh, Viktor Babarika, Sergei Dikhanovsky, Maria Kolesnikova. Since then, uh, no one has attempted to take this lead uh, in full, we're still not fighting for one person, for one leader. We're fighting for all of us. Svetlana Tikhanovska, since she became a candidate, she uh, she said that uh, she's not a leader, she's a symbol. Until now in Belarus, no matter how much the security forces want it, there is no puppet masters who rule protesters. Decentralization of efforts and initiative is an uh, important thing there. We have neighborhood chats, student chats, medical chats, the thousands of other chats. Now we know all our neighbors and people from the area. We know people from di diaspora who started to help from the very first day. We have so mixed teams uh, of people who helped each other, IT workers, lawyers, human rights activists, PR specialists, teachers, and many others. It's such a synergy. When uh, these 
there is a leader or even a pool of leaders, it's easy to eliminate them and crash a protest mood. But uh, in this case, when everyone is his own leader, when everyone fights for himself and his family and not for some leader, how can you stop this? Uh, to repress everyone and that, however, they are trying to do right now in Belarus. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, other interesting thing, parallel worlds and symbols. The former president has long been treated uh, like uh, rain or snow uh, with which little can be done. Just uh, figure out how to minimize contact with them. Uh, the former president, meanwhile, was living somewhere in his own ideal Belarus. After the elections, the difference between these two parallel worlds became too obvious. And to this day, the former president and, and people live in completely different realities. And Belarusians use it, of course. They build their aid funds with cryptocurrencies, a parallel economic buy boxes. They make blacklist of companies affiliated with the state and urge people not to buy goods from them. They make medical teaching initiatives uh, to stop interacting with the state. Even, even the flags of these two parallel worlds are different. The new Belarus has its own symbols. Svetlana Tikhanovska as a symbol of protests of new Belarus and white red flag as a symbol of solidarity. And uh, do you know uh, what, what was the uh, most interesting symbol is for me? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yes, uh, on the day when the Central Election Commission made a decision on the registra registration of presidential candidates and then Viktor Bovarika and Valery Tsipkala were not registered. The bird dropped a dead mouse in front of the journalist uh, who was awaiting the announcement of the result. I think this, uh, this is when the symbolism starts. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Belarus is an IT country. Seriously, even the monstrous shutdown that took place uh, on the 9th and 12th of uh, August pitted us. The number of Telegram users has increased significantly. People have learned how to enable proxies and use VPN services. Previously, businesses launched startups to make money. Now businesses launch startups for solidarity. Over the three months of protest, uh, several digital products have emerged. Offline map of Sunday marches, financial platform, an independent poll, a voting project. A uh, peer to peer platform uh, and hundreds of others, and I believe hundreds will appear. The most valuable acquisition for me during uh, this protest is building a community. Um, it's a neighborhood chats which appear suddenly. What non profits have been striving for years, this community based things, bringing people together at the grassroots levels civic activism, urbanism, it all blossomed again, uh, against the backdrop, backdrop of human unity. In neighborhood chats, uh, we solve some uh, local problems, we paint fences and playgrounds, we collect, uh, uh, we have concerts and lectures, and I'm sure that the digital state is future of Belarus. Uh, this is basically the six thing, uh, interesting features of the Belarusian protest. Um, but this is not, not even the main, main thing, I feel. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, it is a fight. Uh, in this fight, uh, we have already won, won the main prize. We have won each other. We have received the unity of nation. We have received solidarity, mutual support. Those who deve developed local communities uh, turned out to be right. We are witnessing the evolution of civil society and grassroots initiatives. And these, I hope, I believe, uh, will grow into the great civic responsibility for oneself, one's own city, one's own country. And uh, if the current, current situation in Belarus uh, has taught us anything, is that we are, first of all, we are together and we are unbelievable. And together we can do anything. We activists often feel that our actions have not enough impact. But I want to assure you, without the contribution of civil society, the non-profit sector, uh, those desperate rebels uh, and dreamers, uh, far from everything that happens in Belarus right now would be possible. It is we who have been talking about human rights for 26 years. 
It is we who the new Belarusian government is now relying on. It is to us when they come seeking expertise and ask how can we make Belarus better for the people. It was our effort that gave local communities the voice. We taught them, told them how to become leaders, how to solve local problems. And local activists right now are turning to us uh, and uh, ask, uh, ask us to tell them what tolerance and equality are, what digital freedoms are, what human rights are. Our experience, expertise, uh, knowledge of the fields, all this will help uh, help us to build a new democratic Belarus. And I want to tell you, all of you, don't uh, put out your fire. For someone, uh, it is the only light that will uh, one day attract many and maybe illuminate a new way and perhaps for your entire country. And thank you for listening. I hope this, this was somehow useful and uh, inspire you uh, on, on your next activity.